You are now tuning in to Discover Your Potential with radio talk show host Dan Gilman, Cindy Gilman's son. So listen, participate, be inspired, know that you can discover your potential. Here he is, Dan Gilman. Hi, I'm Dan Gilman. I'm host of Discover Your Potential. And today we have an amazing guest today. We have uh, Eli Castonge from Living From Your Art. And I can't wait to introduce you to Eli. Eli, thank you so much for being here today. Truly appreciate well, it. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a great honor to be here. Well, it's, a, it's an honor for you to, to come here. This whole series of, of shows that we're doing is all about the arts because for me, Anyway, I'm very close to the arts because I am an artist. Well, that, oh. that was my background, actually. I did illustration besides going into graphic design, but I did illustration for a number of years and really did painting and, and drawing. So this is really close to my heart, the visual arts. But really, oh. this touches upon so many of the arts. It doesn't have to just be visual. It can be m many types of art and actually outside of art. So I'd okay. love to to chat about not only your book but um, about you and and what you do. And I'd love to start with one thing. Just like, can you tell us about your background and how you got into helping the arts and making a living from their art? Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, I have a, a background. I have a bachelor degree in finance, actually. So I, I've I've worked in the finance world. I've studied this. And, but for all my, my younger years, I wanted to be an actor or a comedian oh. and never got to do the, doing this. I chose between hockey and, and <laughs> comedian. I choose hockey. Maybe I should have chosen like uh, theater courses and all of this, but I chose and it's fine. But I come from a family of artists. Everyone in my family are artists. I have five brothers and sisters. Uh -huh. And both my parents were artists as well. So um, I started to help my family first uh, with their art to promote and sell and all of this uh, with the knowledge I had. I learned along the way and I helped my sister who had a um, face painting company for kids. Oh. And I helped her expand her company in a matter of months. It, it doubled and tripled in, in the revenue. And I, I realized I had really like a gift to help uh, artists. And I, I met my fiance, Caroline, oh, wow. uh, who is a puppeteer. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. And uh, I, I, th there's a funny story. I don't know if we'll have the time, but it's, it's, Absolutely. it's really interesting. Okay, good. So I met Caroline and she, she's actually a multidisciplinary artist. She's also like a, an actress, comedian, clown, no, that's stilt great. walker, puppeteer. Uh, I don't know artist. if I mentioned, but I, I've done puppeteering as well. That's amazing. That's an, <laughs> a very good art form. But the thing is that when I started uh, going out with Caroline, I, I, I wanted to help her increase her income and revenue as an artist. Mm -hmm. And I looked at every niche, every kind of, of work she was doing. So puppetry, stilts, clowns, etc. And <laughs> I told her, I want you to eliminate puppetry. This is no good. I don't think it's it's gonna make you're gonna make money with this and all. And mm. she told me one thing, and it was really like really interesting. She told me which movies and and TV shows were you, you listening when you were young. And I realized that I was I was my favorite movies That's were Labyrinth, yeah. you know, mm. Never Ending Story, mm -hmm. Willow, yep. uh, Star Wars. Uh, I was watching Sesame Street. So yes. every TV shows and movies I was watching had puppets in them. And yep. I forgot about this. Mm -hmm. It's like if I saw my whole life <laughs> went inside my eyes. And I, I helped her a uh, couple months later to actually get hired by Cirque du Soleil wow. as a puppeteer. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah, so so I realized I was I was really good for this, and I started helping multiple kind of artists like photographers, clowns, uh, street entertainers, that's great, uh, crafts makers, painters. So yeah, that's that's pretty. That's a short story, but that's pretty much it. Oh, that's great. We should talk. 
<laughs> so <laughs> we're actually, talking. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but we, so it's interesting because we actually had Bill Beretta on, on one of our, well, actually on a few of our shows, he's, um, he's on, he's at Disney and he's okay. the uh, puppeteer for the Muppets and also executive director there too. But wow. really, really cool guy. But I love puppetry. I love puppets. I mean, uh, you know, I've always had a, a love for it. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. That's a great connection. It's, it's a great art form. It's an interesting art form. It really is. It, it, yeah. it actually is all of the modalities in one. You've got your painting, your puppetry building, your performance, yeah. your everything. So that's what I, I love about. Yeah. You know, one of my, my most successful client is actually a puppeteer from Ontario. Oh, and he, I helped him. His name is Mike Harding from Apple Fun Puppetry. He's an amazing puppeteer. Oh wow! And I helped him. Ju just I, we started working together just at the beginning of the pandemic. Yes. He was going to work at a Amazon warehouse because all of the shows were can canceled, right? Wow. And I met him just the, at the right moment, mm -hmm. and we've been uh, working together for the past two years and a half. And he literally like doubled his business through the pandemic. And now it's going amazing. So wow, that's great. working with a coach one-on-one -on -one is really something magical. It's when key. You, you have, yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. That is, that's really interesting. Yeah. So um, I, can you explain, because I'd really love to hear more about this though. Can you explain the concept behind your book, Living sure. From Your Art? Sure. I, I, and this is a great As book, a so everybody should. I, yeah. I don't mean to interject you, Eli, but um, I am personally going to give five copies of Living from Your Art Away to our viewers who email me at Cindy. I'm going to use my mother's email address again. Sorry. <laughs> she, is, she doesn't get her email anymore. But Cindy at CindyGilman.com. That's Cindy at CindyGilman.com. And somebody, some lucky viewers, five of them are going to be lucky to have your book anyway sorry i didn't mean to interject but just wanted to throw that out there that's an amazing gift thank you so much for doing this it's oh no it's a, thank you pretty cool. so so yeah this book like uh, as i've been helping artists for the last six to eight years um i've accumulated a lot of knowledge because i'm not perfect yet we're, we're still learning all the time right we're trying stuff this is entrepreneurship like you try stuff some of them work some of them don't work yes so i was doing one-on-one -on -one coaching i tried as well doing group coaching having like a groups of like five to ten artists at the same time i like both medium but one-on-one -on -one coaching really allows me to be more personalized customized to this person and really follow up in a great way so yeah I realized that one on one, it's gonna me, it's gonna take me because I have a big purpose. I want to help all artists on this planet who have the talent to make a living from their art to actually make it. So that's a very juicy purpose, very yes. huge. So I needed to have like a different way of reaching more people. So with the book, I put all my tips that I teach in one on one coaching. Everything is there. Of course, I'm going to eventually release a new edition with more sure. stuff, but everything is there for you to start. And if anybody get the book and apply what's in the book the right way and uh, in enough quantities, they're going to get results. So that's mainly it. Like this, And these are simple, basic principles that don't get people into confusion about what they should do. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted for that book because there's so many courses on social media, on success, on money, on whatever. And all of these things are good. It's just right. there's so many stuff that yeah. sometimes you get into confusion. It's true. Right. And how, how do you how do you help artists develop their sales and marketing skills? Well, working with me. I will help them. I think the best way to help someone is to help them focus mm. because sometimes they don't know where to go right. to get results. So as soon as you're focused, you will have more results and there's no better way at incre at, to increase your self-confidence than having results. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I give you, I give them knowledge so that they can understand how long it can take to get one gig or one cell. Mm. How many times you have to contact someone on average to get one cell or one gig, you know, mm. one contract. So this, this gives them confidence. One other thing I do with them is to practice, you know, playing games of like, I'm the client, you call me, we practice. Oh, well, As they great. practice to like what to say over the phone sure. or in person. This is basic stuff. This is easy to do, but most people don't do it. Role playing, you know? That's true. And uh, just to understand that the, the book is really good for anyone to just understand that their art helps. There's a chapter that's called that in the mm. book, your art helps others. And when you understand this and you understand that you have to have a purpose as an artist yes, and it has to be really high because there, it, it's hard. It's hard yes. to make it as an artist. Yeah. So when you understand this and you apply this in your art business, you become more confident and having me to be able like being as a mentor, you know, to tell them you're, you're doing the right thing. You're going in the right way, the right direction. Sure. It helps, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I know you gave an example of, you know, the, the gentleman who's the, the puppeteer, but can you give an example of another like success story of an artist you've helped to make a living from their totally. art? Yeah, yeah, totally. Right. I, I have another one. This one is, is an, an interesting story. It's a photographer. He was a very successful photographer uh, in Montreal. Mm. Uh, before the pandemic, he was one of the top, like, uh, for events, you know, big events, photographer. But during a pandemic, what happens? There's no events, right? So yeah. all of his business, like, came out of the way. Uh, and it, it was done. Like he had no clients anymore. It was like zero dollars coming in. Mm. And he actually um, started working with me. And the second week that he started working with me, he booked for fifteen thousand dollars of gigs. Wow! It was it was <laughs> one of my best success story. And the simplest thing that I asked him to do was call your past clients and get from some news from them mm. ask them how they've been through the pandemic how was it for them and but call all of your best clients first mm -hmm. he did a couple of phone calls you know sometimes you get out of communication with the key people in your life and this is when the sure. Uh, I don't know if I can say that but shit hits the fan, you know, right. like it's not we'll, good. We'll bleep that one out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it, it, you have to stay in communication and by asking personal questions to your clients, because clients are relationships, are friendships. Client is just a, a word, but a client is a friend. You know, this person mm -hmm. is one of the only person that helps you to, to live, to survive, because they give you the money necessary to pay your rent, pay your food, and all of this, you know? Right. So this is a great story. I have many stories I, I can tell, but this is one of my favorite ones, because in two weeks, he yeah. was done. He was back on track. Yeah. No, that's yeah. incredible. That that truly is. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Um. Uh, so I'm just trying to think of, I guess this is how I can say, how do you help artists navigate the challenges of the current mar art market? Well, what kind of is, challenges? Well, that's, that's the thing, I guess. Are there any challenges? Well, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Like if we look at the current market, let's say. I mean, did the market go up when COVID struck? Cause uh, a lot of people are home now. They even like artists that, you know, create collections. I would think there would be more buyers to do, you know, to get collections of art. It actually did. I have a friend of mine that is um, a coach for photographers, actually. And he he sells canvas prints of his photos and oh. his business boomed. He he never had as, as much business than during COVID. So 
I have to say that the market will always be ever changing. Yeah. You know, there will be ups and downs and inflation, whatever, right. turmoil, econ economic turmoils. But sure. an artist that is focused on just expanding his business, his network, yeah. communicating the most he can with the most people he can, mm -hmm. he will never have a problem. Because even in pandemics or recessions, he will understand that if there's a recession, he has to increase his number of outreach to people. Mm. He will never stop working on his business and go work at a day job. He will actually increase the amount of energy he puts into his business. So mm. the challenges are personal, I believe. It's more personal than the environment. It's what it. do you do to change the way that the environment is is doing to your business? It's gotcha. always like that. And um, I guess I would kind of dovetail into my next question. Like, how do you help artists understand their target audience and, and reach them effectively? Because I know there's a lot of artists there that I'm just going to say painter, let's say, for example, like they, they have a certain market, right? So, and a certain audience that would appreciate their work. So how does, how does someone, cause we're artists. I mean, I'm an artist, but how do I understand and appreciate? Ah, oh, I understand who my art audience is. I'm assuming that's one thing that you do help with. So it's one of the most important thing because you don't want to sell your art to the wrong people because right. then you'll be, uh, you'll have deception, you know, you'll be like, uh, oh, Nobody wants to buy my art. It's just you're not selling to the right people. Yes. So remember, selling is helping. Selling is helping someone. So who should your art help? Yes. Um, there's two, two ways. It's like if you never sold any kind of art, like you, you created some, but you never sold, mm -hmm. you have to see – which other painter is similar to what you're doing? Gotcha. This is one strategy. It's not the only one. Right. But to see who are their audience, mm. what do they like about this art, etc. I believe that creating surveys, mm -hmm. you know, Google Forms, it's so easy. Oh, sure. You create a survey around this specific art that you do and that the, this other artist does. You connect with his followers, his audience, and you ask them if, if they would agree to create, to fill out a survey for you. Mm. You start like this, sure. right? One, two, three, five. I would say that a hundred survey filled is a good way to start to understand your audience. That's great. And then a survey is always, it's also a good way to create an audience because at the end of the survey, you can ask them, I'm actually going to create a, giveaway or whatever you know a new a custom painting to win for one person would you be uh, like uh, interested in this so you could do this mm -hmm. if you already sold some paintings the best thing to do is to contact your past clients mm. ask them why did they buy from you what did they do with the painting where mm. is it in their home which kind of emotion that does this painting create in them? Interesting. Yes. You know, like if it's family members, sometimes they buy just because it's your family members and it's right. It's <laughs> right. fine. Right. You start like this. Yeah, of course. But asking people what they like about it. And mm -hmm. like, of course you have some people that are like more like uh, animal uh, paintings. So you go to see people who like this kind of animal landscape you go see people who like this kind of, so it's really to ask questions in my podcast. I talk a lot, a lot of about, about uh, asking questions to people. Oh, interesting. Don't be shy to ask very specific questions like you do. Your questions are amazing. So asking the right questions in one of the best ability you can have as an artist. Well, and, and on that note, where can people find you on your podcast? Cause that now. I'm oh, curious. Yeah. yeah. It's uh it's on, um, I don't know how many platforms, but I know it's on Apple podcast, uh, Spotify, Google podcast, Amazon. But do they look uh, under your name or do you have a, a you title? can look under my name or living from your art, living from your art. That's great. Yeah. 
Um, how do you, so how do you help artists like create and price their art? Cause that's another issue that artists have to like yeah. in a way that is both, I would say profitable and also true to their vision too. So a lot of people either underprice or overprice or not price. Just, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Now pricing is a, is one of the most popular conversation that people have, I would say that there's oh. no perfect way of, of pricing your art. And there's many stories I have related to this, but there's also different like uh, situation. If you never sold a piece, never sold one service, never sold an illustration, yeah. a show, a CD, whatever, the price doesn't matter. You just sell something, mm. accept money for what you created. This is the start of the wheel because at sure. first it's a personal thing. Accepting money for your creation is hard. It can yeah, be it hard, right? So just- I have a hard time letting go of my art. <laughs> so I, I know. There you go. There you go. So, so sell something. We don't care about the price. Of course, it's not going to stay that price for all the time, but sure. you sell something. If you already sold some- I had a client. She was actually a puppet maker. Wow. Right? Puppet builder. Nice. Puppet builder. Yeah. So she uh, she was selling puppets for about, I don't know, like 65 bucks, 90 bucks. Oh, my gosh. That's really, that's really inexpensive. Exactly. So I helped her like 5x her prices. Mm -hmm. she, wa she had the confidence to do this, the self-confidence to do this. And mm -hmm. recently she sold the puppet for $5,000. I believe it. That's great. A huge, a huge one. Um, wow. But it was a personal thing. She did not understand. So I made her calculate how many hours did it take her to create a puppet? Mm -hmm. So she realized that she was making $4 per hour. Yeah. You know? And then I told her, let's put a minimum price or salary for yourself mm -hmm. at 20 bucks an hour. Let's start with this. Yeah. So she understood the concept. So this is one way to see this. For a painting, you could do this. Sure. If it takes you 40 hours and you want to make at least, let's say 20 bucks, it's 800 bucks for this painting. Right. If you want to make 40 bucks, it's 1600 bucks. Sure. You know? So that's a way, but also to understand the market. Mm -hmm. So to communicate with other professionals, but even if other professionals are charging, let's say $5,000 for whatever they're selling, yeah. if you're not comfortable charging this, don't charge this. You will never sell anything. Right. It's a personal thing. It's a feeling. You can raise. And what I say to my client is that, let's say you start at $1,000 for your services. Mm -hmm. If you sell it and there's no negotiation required for the next client, raise it. 50 bucks or a hundred sure. bucks, yeah. you know, increase in, in, by increments. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. And I think this is really important. Um, can you discuss the importance of branding and building an online presence for artists? Because I really think that's really important thing. And a lot of artists don't do that. I found. Yeah, I agree. Branding is, is an interesting. Uh, it's funny because my father was really good at this. He had like a marketing agency for 35 years. So mm -hmm. he he was the pro at this. I would not say I'm the pro at branding. Uh, branding is really uh, you you keep the same image all the time, you know, and people recognize you for the, I would say it's important, but I would not emphasize on this at first. Mm-hmm. I would say on the long term, it's it's important so that people, when they see, let's say, like my book, it's orange and everything on my social media has the same orange. So that's sure. the kind of branding image, you know. But what's more important for an artist is to get herself or himself out there the more he can. Yeah. Frequency, you know. Every day, I have a chapter in my book that's the uh, two months uh, social media challenge mm. where I invite artists to just try this for two months for 60 days. Wow. Post something about your art behind the scenes, uh, some of your work, a client with your work, a testimonial, you know, whatever it is. 
yeah. ideas, selfie videos for two months straight, start posting on all your social media profiles. The same thing, don't have to be different. Sure. You post the same thing on all social media profile yep. and see what happens. Yep. And most of the time what happens is that your followers or your friends on mm. these platforms will say, hey, you're starting an art business or hey, I thought you stopped creating or uh. hey, you started again or so it creates a kind of momentum where people yeah can engage wake up <laughs> right exactly and they, they they think that something is new but the only new thing is your number of communications of outreach through into the world of social media yeah. it doesn't mean you're going to make sales no of course it's just you saying hello i'm here yes and what would you give advice um, or what advice, sorry, would you give artists just starting out and trying to make a living from their art? Just starting out, I would say, first of all, you have to have talent. Like I, I, I hate to be harsh by saying this because I, I want to help every artist. Sure. Talent is something you acquire. You can, some are more talented faster than others, but sure. you can always improve. So when people start to see that and say like people could buy this like yep. you should go see this person and talk about your art because this when you start getting more of these compliments yeah this means that more people are seeing it hmm. then maybe it's it's time to start this so what i would um recommend is that you start with your own network friends, family, colleagues at work, at school, whatever, you tell them about your art. I would say that surveys are the best. Mm -hmm. Like I told earlier, you create a very short survey. What does my art make you think about? Let's say you're a singer. What does my song, like which singer do you feel is similar to my art? Yeah. Why? Do you, what do you like about my songs? What would get, could get improved? Who do you think would like these kind of songs? You know, yeah. would you buy a CD or like, I know CDs are not that good anymore, but would <laughs> you buy an album from me or would you listen to Spotify uh, from this song? Mm -hmm. And then you understand what people think about this, but you have to make lots of surveys and then you understand more. But if it was like my art, I would go to actually understand who is similar to me because I yeah. know that you're really unique. Everybody's unique, but still there will be someone that is successful that is a little bit similar or very similar to your art. And go check it out. Go see who's liking, who's commenting, who's like interested in there. Another mm -hmm. thing I suggest, because when you're an artist, you can sell to two different kind of, of industries or field to an organization or to a person, you know, an individual. Yeah. It's harder to sell to individual because they don't necessarily always have the money, but organizations. So there's B2C that's business to client. So you sell to an individual client and B2B that is business to business where you sell to another business. I always recommend you start with B2B because it's going to be easier to create an income stream from that. That's great. So working with uh, interior designer, if you're a painter, yeah, you know, instead of selling to one person, the amount of effort you're going to put to sell to one person or one interior designer that's going to hire you most often yeah. is different. So that's what I would recommend. Go to for organizations first. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so I just have a few more questions but I truly appreciate your time. I feel blessed uh, to have you on. No, and I'm having I'm, a blast. <laughs> and I'm hopefully I can get you on again too. I'm just trying to be cognizant of time of when we have no to problem. go off the air, but uh, how do you stay current on trends? Like the art industry changes and how do you incorporate those in your teachings? And sorry, my second question is like, what tips do you have for artists? Um, you know, that they could actually look at trends. I don't know if we've told, we didn't talk about trends, but no. I know trends is a, it can 
be something that's brought up usually uh, in, in the art world, especially because um, I even know like sometimes they're into, into landscape scenes sometimes, you know, or music there's trends in all different types of, you know, modalities of art. No, I agree. I, I would agree to disagree. I think. Okay. Um, that would I, be I good. Think, <laughs> yeah. I don't really believe in trends because trends are created by individuals. So True. you can follow trends or you can follow your own path. Of course, yeah. um, it's it's you don't become like the the best known person in the world right away. Right. But if you stick to one, your personality, yes, and your style, and you never stop pushing this, you can eventually create a trend. Um, hmm. one thing that I teach in my book is that a lot of time people will buy from you because it's you, because you're right. You know what? You, if you have talent, true. many people have talent, but a great personality, uh, a great purpose, yes. creating a movement around your art, you know, yes. creating a, a community. This is what you're looking for. This is what right. life is about. You yes. know, we want to create a great network of people like yeah. the interviews you're doing. You're you're creating a great network of people who wants to discover their potential and help yes. others do the same. This is one of the best thing in the world. Mm. You know, we have so much potential that is sleeping somewhere. We want to wake it like make it wake up. So right. I would say that trends exist, but mostly on social media and social media is not the reality social mm. media is is still media the social media you know? <laughs> right it's, it's still media so yeah. media is not always a reality so i would say stick to your purpose so if you yeah. just follow trends mm -hmm. it's because your purpose is not clear enough got it write it write about your purpose until you have a couple of sentences and put this on your wall yes you know and you help clients with that too, right? To yeah. define what their purpose is. And, totally. and can you tell us like any upcoming projects or initiatives that you have in the works, or maybe there you can't talk about them, but, or to continue to support artists in their careers? Yeah, totally. Well, one more thing that I need to create, um, there's actually a course that I created and I, I never released is, is how to create easily a podcast, you know? Ah, because yes. a podcast is, is with the stream yard like we're using right now, is so easy. Sure. It's not that easy. You have to still find guests and, and create the intro, outro music. Um, but it's a great way to actually, you know, if you, let's say you want to work with interior designer, you're a painter and you want to sure. work with interior designer, start interviewing interior designers. Yes. It's the best That's way smart. to create like us too. Like we're going to create, we create this instant relationship. We're friends now because you have amazing questions. When you have great questions like this, uh, it's, it's so good, you know, so you create a great relationship. So I want to create uh, another course uh, similar to the book, but with me talking about the concepts and giving more examples. Sure. Uh, as a course, probably called Living from Your Art. So this is maybe for the next year. Living from two. your podcast. Sorry? Living from your podcast. Living from <laughs> your podcast, yeah. And, and, and also I want to... Um, I'm going to translate. It's funny because my, my first language is French. Maybe you can see it with my accent, but um, I'm going to translate my book in French. I wrote it in English because oh, I wow. wanted to reach more people. Sure. But 2023, I'm going to, now I'm traveling in the UK. Yes. But when I come back to Canada, I'm going to actually promote the book in my province that is Quebec province. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, so you're it, from Canada. Yeah, from Canada, Quebec, Pro Montreal. Montreal. Oh, nice. I love Montreal. Yeah. Gone there quite so, a few times. That's great. Oh, yeah. I think, when yeah, I, it when I go, are you in Montreal now or? I wasn't, I wasn't Montreal, but now I, I moved to the South Shore 15 minutes by car, but I, I live in Montreal my whole life. Oh, wow. But you're yeah. still in Canada. 
No, now I'm in the UK for a couple of months. Oh, you're in the UK right now. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's, it's it must 10, be really 10 45, late. Ten forty-five. Oh <laughs> I'm so sorry to be so late. I didn't realize you're in the UK. No, no, it, it's fine. It's fine. I, I'm so happy to to be on your podcast. So well, yeah, there's many things happening for the the business, but I want to help more artists with the book for sure. So yeah. if you want to get the book, it's on any Amazon platform. So it's uh, living from your art, and Dan is is great enough to. Give five books away. Yeah, I'm so going to give amazing. five of these away. Maybe even more. Who knows? But, uh, <laughs> th that would be great. And just, you know, to to uh, promote, you know, who you are, especially, you know, because I'm an artist as well. And it's so critical for us to, for us artists also to be able to, you know, thrive on yeah. our passion, really. Yeah. And to touch people's lives with our work. And that's really what it comes down to. Um, yeah. So the, I truly appreciate that. Well, it's my pleasure. And the best thing, you just said it. Like in my latest podcast episode, I talk about your responsibility as an artist. Mm. You do it for yourself at first. It's almost like a therapy. You know, it has to come out. Yes. But when you have talent and you realize it and you're not promoting enough yeah. your work, there's a lot of people that you're not helping because right. they need your art. Yes. So if you're not promoting your art, you're being selfish. Mm. So don't keep it for yourself. If you know that it can help others, right. even if they have to buy it, it's fine. They will buy it if they need it, if they feel it, it can help them. So yes, it's really interesting to see can, it that way. So can people contact you? Do you have a way of people to contact you directly? So yeah. that way, after they read the book, they can hire you to consult with them. Because I know after I read this book, I might need your support too. So because <laughs> so, yeah. I, I want to be empowered because it's all about empowerment, right? Uh, to actually, you know, God gave us talent. Well, I believe anyway, God gave us talent to use. Yeah. So why aren't we using it? Because of yeah. fear. You know, there's also that, there's also that part of some artists or some people who have mindset where they have fear about, you know, moving forward or, you know, fear about going out and trying to sell your art, but you yeah. empower them to do that. And that's yeah. incredible. And by the way, if you have these fears, you are normal. Everybody has these fears. Like it's not like a, oh, you're you're different, you're introvert, you're no, you're freaking normal. You're a right. normal person for having these fears. I have these fears sometimes to meet new people. You know what did our parents t uh, tell us when we were we were younger? Don't talk to strangers. Yeah, you know, it's not the case anymore when you're an adult. Talk to strangers, talk yeah. to more strangers, meet yeah. new strangers, you know? So these are kind of mindsets you have to change. And, and yes, uh, more artists need, and in the book, they have all the, the, the contact information to contact me, but they Perfect. can visit my website, lecastongay.com. Yes. Uh, and there's a contact form to send me an email. There's also Perfect. the link to my podcast. There's a link to my books some articles, whatever. So yeah. yeah. Great. Well, anyway, I know we're, we're running out of time and you need to go to sleep soon, but, <laughs> I, I, but I truly appreciate you, you know, coming on the show and uh, also, you know, giving us uh, and, and artists around the world uh, hope that they can actually, and that's really what it is too, to give them yeah. hope that they can actually, make a living uh, from what their purpose is and what they do in their life and contribute to the world as a whole. So I yeah. truly appreciate your, your support and, and guidance. My pleasure, Dan. It's really cool to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Thank you so much. This is Cindy Gilman, and you're listening to Discover Your Potential. So until next time, do something nice for yourself, but... Do something nice for someone else. In every way, every day, I need less of myself, I need more of him. 
Introducing Tower Gardens. With rising gas prices, food prices, fertilizer shortages, and uncertainty about what goes into your food, create an entirely different experience by bringing the supermarket into your home with easy to use Tower Gardens. The vertical aeroponic garden system has an efficient compact design that is soil free, weed free, pesticide free, practically maintenance free, and requires minimal space, no green thumb necessary. Let your imagination run wild growing celery, squash, watermelon, herbs, super greens, and much more, indoors or outdoors, all year round. Create your own food supply, save money, and precious time with Tower Gardens. Learn more at peopleandpausewellness.com.